What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out a home theater system by RSL Speakers. All right, so shout out to the guys at RSL Speakers for sending this whole home theater system for me to review. This is gonna be a 5.1 speaker system. So it's gonna have LCR plus the surround speakers plus the center channel speaker and a subwoofer. So this center channel model is the CG23M. All right, so here it is. This is the center channel. This is fairly compact. Let's take a quick measurement of this thing. Size wise, it measures approximately 16 inches wide by six inches in depth. And height wise, it is about five and three quarters. So this has got two four inch woofers. It's got a one inch silk dome tweeter. And the response of this goes down to 80 Hertz to 20,000 K. It's got a nice matte black veneer to it. And on the back, you can see that it's got some inserts. So you can put some mounting brackets in here to mount it to your wall. And then you can see that we've got some binding posts on the black back as well. Now we're going to check out the left, right, and then surround speakers. So I've got four of these, but we're only going to unbox one. This is the CG3M. It's got the same design as the center channel. You can see it's just a regular square shape. It's got the slight little curvatures on the ends. Size wise, it's about six inches in depth. It's about five and a quarter inches wide. And then height wise, we're looking at about nine and a quarter inches in height. This comes with a removable grill, just like the center channel. It's got the same four inch woofer. It's got the same one inch soft dome tweeter. And the frequency response of this is 90 Hertz to 20,000 K. It's also a vented speaker as well. The vent is located on the bottom and around the back. We've also got your mounting inserts. So you can use this with some speaker mounting brackets if you wanted to, or it comes with the keyhole mounting bracket. Then also you get your binding post as well. And I do have four of these for the left, right, and the surround speakers. All right, so the next thing we're gonna check out is this guy here. This is the brand new 10S Mark II RSL Speed Woofer. So size-wise, let's measure this up really quick. It measures approximately 15 inches in height, 15 inches or so wide. So depth-wise, we're looking at about 15 and three quarters in depth with the grill on, and then with the grill off, it is about 15 inches deep without the grill. So this comes with a 10 inch driver in it. The frequency response of this guy is rated at 22 Hertz. I think the in-room response is something like 18 Hertz. So it should go a little bit deeper inside the room, which you, depending on how big your room is. There's also a nice little RSL Speed Woofer logo on the front, and this nice glossy black finish. And then if we spin it around back, we've got your power indicator, your wireless, pairing button, you've got your volume knob, crossover frequency from 40 hertz up to 200 hertz, phase, you got a variable phase, auto power on or off, your unbalanced RCA ins, your LFE in is gonna be your left, and then you got your speaker level inputs here, main power switch, and then your power inlet. And this amplifier is rated at 400 watts RMS or up to 1020 watts peak power. The speakers are going to go in my dedicated theater space hooked up to a Trenov Altitude processor and they'll be powered by a Trenov Amplitude 8M amplifier. I'm going to turn off the room correction in the processor so it's not altering the sound in any way. This will give me a good idea of what these speakers will sound like on their own. I'll also play some demos with the subwoofer on crossed over at 100Hz and also with the subwoofers turned off with the speakers running full range. This way we'll see how dynamic they can perform on their own without the help from any subwoofers. For demos, I'll be using a Zipidi Media Player and a Kaleidoscape. The first demo we're going to check out is Midway. It's got a ton of front to back surround activity with a tremendous amount of bass. Everyone else battle stations. 
As expected, if you want to give these types of huge action movies any life, you're gonna need a potent subwoofer, because running these speakers without it, the sound is gonna be very thin. Instead of just looking at the explosions on screen, you're gonna want to feel them. Although having the subwoofers turned off, the detail and clarity becomes very apparent, which makes surround movement easily identifiable. So when the planes move front to back and vice versa, tracking their movement is very distinct and very cohesive. This seamless blend amongst all the speakers are due to having perfect timbre matching with the front and surround channels. That's because they're exactly the same. Now while the effects remain clean through every speaker, adding the subwoofer ups the dynamic presence and makes these little speakers perform like larger ones. But using the speakers and the sub in my two channel setup, there was a clean handoff between the two without a noticeable gap. As for the sub, a lot has been said about these RSL subwoofers, and everything's true. This performed like a much more expensive subwoofer. It's one of the punchiest subwoofers that I've tested for movies and for music. It delivered a ton of explosive slam from every explosion in Midway, and I could feel the wave of bass travel along with the planes flying through my room. It's very clean without any noticeable slop or bloatiness. Now, let's say you paired a subwoofer up to each speaker in a music-only setup. You would have a real high-end system without the real high-end price tag. It doesn't dig as low as some other 10 inches that I've reviewed, but for the price, the Speedwoofer is a wicked good deal and just as tactile as those subs that cost several times more. The next demo we're gonna pop on is Knock on the Cabin. It's got a great atmospheric mix that doesn't rely on the subwoofer channel. As far as soundstage, it seemed to stretch about a foot behind the speaker's locations. I found them to be very neutral and laid back, which if you plan on playing these at very loud volumes, will be very easy on your ears. These do come up short for picking up the finest details, hence them being neutral, so in comparison to my Ascendo speakers, they didn't have the same airy transparency. They came across more forward sounding yet intimate. Depending on your preference, you might like one over the other. It's obviously not an apples to apples comparison, but it's always good to have a reference point. There's still plenty of detail retrieval in this demo that mirrors nicely what you're seeing on screen. I wasn't let down or felt like I was missing anything to take me out of the movie. Okay. Relax. The one speaker that is different from the rest of the other speakers is the center channel. It's got two 4 inch drivers rather than one, and it's bigger. And as far as center channel duty, we're gonna check out the rise of Skywalker. Palpatine has got a pretty deep voice. You will rule all the galaxy as the new emperor. But beware, she is not who you think she is. You will rule all the galaxy as the new emperor. But beware, she is not who you think she is. I think it's easy to tell the difference between the CG23 center channel and the CG3. The 23 is far more robust sounding with a lot more deep bass. I was actually surprised at the amount of low frequency this little speaker can throw out. Palpatine's voice had a deep, heavy presence which really projected itself into my room, while the CG3 was calling the subwoofer in for some help. And going back to the first demo with Midway, running all the speakers full range, the oddball out was the center channel since it does have the heavier presence from the other ones. Planes would lack any depth till they hit the center channel. Of course, crossing over to a subwoofer, you wouldn't notice the difference in timbre. At the time of this video, the entire 5.1 package is selling for $1,000. If I walked into a room and didn't see what I was listening to, I think this was a far more expensive setup than it is. I'd say for a small to mid-sized room, this package will really shine. For larger spaces, this may strain to fill the space. That said, these are very clean and neutral sounding speakers. They've got excellent detail, but the CG3s by themselves will 100% need to be paired with a subwoofer, and the Speedwoofer 10S Mark II is a perfect match. Now this whole package is well worth the asking price, although for a little more, I think having all CG23s would be a more compelling option. They weren't as light sounding as the CG3, so crossing them over lower would give more impact in every channel. They're only slightly bigger than the CG3, so it'll still have a very small footprint and not take up much space in your room. But depending on your needs and your budget, you can always piece together any configuration on RSL's website. 
Well, those are my thoughts on the CG3M RSL home theater package. Have you ever heard an RSL system? And if so, how did you like their sound? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Oh, and I forgot to mention, congrats to Black Onyx 2228. You, my friend, are the winner of this very RSL home theater package. Thanks for subscribing and commenting. And thanks to everyone else who has also been supporting the channel through the years. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.